Okay. Hello, everybody. Thank you very much for giving me the opportunity to talk here to the organizers. Uh, yeah, so I will talk about economics and Bitcoin. I will have a little bit more what we call microeconomic stance in comparison with macroeconomic. Uh, so I call this uh, presentation Economics and Bitcoin. I, I, I was first thinking about economics of Bitcoin, but I, I believe uh, actually the relationship between Bitcoin and economics should be seen more as a both-way road uh, rather than a one-way road that is, as it is usually done. And I believe the end should really see as a symmetric, symmetric relationship between both, um, both notions. Okay, if you heard about Bitcoin uh, and economics uh, in the press, it should look more or less like these things. Um, let's call them authorities. Let's, let's say Nobel Prizes are authorities. I'm not sure it's a good way to say that, but let's put it this way. Uh, Paul Krugman said Bitcoin is evil, not less. And uh, more recently, Robert Schiller, another Nobel Prize, said that Bitcoin is definitely a bubble and that it's not such a great idea. Uh, le let's, let's just add that both authors, actually, both uh, economists actually came, I mean, were more moderate afterwards when they were talking about economics following the debates that, that followed these kind of uh, statements. Uh, then this is written here, but that's more or less the first approach they had with the, with the subject. Um, now, uh, actually, I believe I believe there is much, much more to say about Bitcoin and economics than this. J just as a as a as a as a, um, just as a remark, please stop me if if I, if you, if I, I don't know exactly how how deep I can go in uh, economic terms, but definitions and so on of the of the terms, or in the in the Bitcoin protocol understanding its mechanism. So please stop me if if anything is not clear in what I'm saying. Uh, if you need some clarification during the talk, and, and uh, that will be clearer for everybody. Uh, there are many. So Bitcoin, as you may know, is uh, has been created uh, pseudonymously by someone or even maybe a group of person named uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Uh, the, 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 the first paper was written in 2008. There are many speculations about who this guy or these guys may be. Uh, definitely, there is no none of these assumptions that lead to any economic trace or something. So, we may be sh be comfortable with saying that Bitcoin was not designed by economists. Uh, however, uh, still, it has definitely it is an economic object, right? I, I can see at least two uh, two reasons. There may be others. Uh, first, Bitcoin definitely has an economic agenda. It's, it's been uh, just said uh, before, related to monetary economics. Uh, the, the very paper that founded Bitcoin uh, uh, is, uh, has in the title a cash system, right? So the very purpose of Bitcoin is to complement or replace, or it's not clear, but it has to do with the cash, money, and so on. So it, in this in this sense, it, it definitely has some economic uh, value in it. Let's say, uh, and another thing is that in many many places in the protocol, uh, there are many um, economic features. So d we're dealing here with incentive theories, so or game theory. So at some places in the protocol, you expect that the rewards, constraints, preferences of the agent agents. Are are shaped such that people will will participate in the in the in the in the protocol the way they they're supposed to do so, right? And this relies on some economics, um, some economics assumptions, right? So definitely it has to do with economists, but it, it's not it's not been done by economists. Uh, so I believe there are some some um, some uh, questions that should be answered by. Uh, economists when they talk about Bitcoin, and I'm, I will not be talking about finance here, so only uh, uh, economics, like m mostly microeconomics again. Uh, there are some questions an economist has to, to ask and to answer about Bitcoin be beyond saying that it's just a bubble or, or that it's just evil, just like that. 
And I believe also that in some sense, Bitcoin can change the way economists, uh, at least academics in economics, see the world and monetary economics, I guess. So I will try to uh, list some of these questions, give you some thoughts. Uh, of course, I will not be exhaustive. There are many, many other things. Also, it's a very new uh, topic. And I guess much of the questions I, I will ask will see answers, and some new questions will arise when actually we will know more about how Bitcoin will be used. As you know, Bitcoin is a protocol. We're at the start of its use. And uh, right now, we don't know much about its future evolution. So much is ahead, and we will see what, what will go on. OK, let's start with the following question. What is Bitcoin? I'm, I'm always asked by uh, in the press or in a large audience talk, but what is Bitcoin? So usually, uh, my first rule is to avoid the word money. So I'm sorry for um, I will make an exception here. And let's, let's, let's ask the question in the following order, try to give some answers and see what it, what it leads to. Um, is Bitcoin original as a money? So we had first a long uh, talk about money. I believe there are uh, may maybe a few other things to say. Is Bitcoin original money? Definitely. Um, in, in the file system as we know it, uh, the trust you need to have is in the, is in, is in the authority that is, that is issuing the money. So the, the only reason why you accept a 20 euros bill is because you know that at some point you will be able to give it to someone else for some good. Right? Uh, the reason why you do that also is because you know that the, the authority, or you believe, that the authority that is issuing the money will not flood the market overnight so that your, your bill will be worth nothing, all right? Uh, this is true for Fiat, but it's also true for gold standard, as has been noted before. Uh, in, in Bitcoin, it's pretty different. You don't, have to, you, you don't need to have trust in any authority. Actually, you move that trust from an authority to, a, to an algorithm. And that's, I guess, the, the greatest difference with the money as we, as we know it. Again, I, I will come back to exactly. So, so when I'm talking money here, I'm talking about mean of exchange, right, mainly. Um, so and just a word about openness, since we're in a, since this is the dedicated uh, field here. Um, so because of this reason, Bitcoin has to be open. It cannot be otherwise. Right? Because you need to have a full trust about the, the issuance rate. So in Bitcoin, this is encrypted in the, in the protocol. I will not go into details how would that get changed, a hard fork and so on. But you know, we know that today there are about 13 million Bitcoins in circulation. At the maximum, in, uh, I believe it's in 2140 or something, there will be 21 uh, million Bitcoin in circulation never more, and the rate of issuance is exactly known. Imagine that, for instance, a uh, Apple or Microsoft was issuing uh, Bitcoin, and you wouldn't have no idea about uh, what the issuance rate could be. Of course, your trust would have to go back to Microsoft or Apple for the issuance, uh, for, for, for to make sure that your what you have in your pocket is not monkey money, right? So. Uh, openness is necessary for Bitcoin. I, I also believe this is why actually it's a, it's a good thing also, and I believe that was made on, on purpose, that the, the founders of Bitcoin, the creators of Bitcoin, have remained totally unknown by anyone. Um, this is the best way they could do to avoid any authority, even a moral one. So in some sense, so some, some people are always in the press. You could also see concerns of it. But how can we trust something that, is, that has been created by someone that is unknown? Actually, it's the opposite. It's, it's way better than these guys are unknown or these guys are unknown than if they were, right? So that's for the point about openness. Of course, it also uh, implies some side effects. The protocol being open, you have a, a uh, plenty, plenty of money. I mean, you can you can create your own money just by copy pasting the the, the Bitcoin uh, protocol and changing Bitcoin by 
anything else by the by anything else and starting the, the the blockchain from the start that's your own money of course that means that we're entering a, um, a world of uh, total wild money competition that may have some uh, some uh, side effects uh, so the now that we answered uh, about is Bitcoin original money uh, as a money? Actually, I believe uh, it's not a money, I, or at, it's not just a money. Uh, uh, for now, we've we're, we've been talking in the first talk about complementarity, uh, complementary money, and uh, things like this. I believe the whole point and the whole um, uh, uh, interest that that that. Bitcoin can have comes from the fact that it is not just a money, it is a protocol. So it means that it can... So you can do many, many, many things with, Bitco with Bitcoin that you cannot do with money. It, 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 it uh, works s completely differently. Bitcoin with a B, capital B would be a protocol, something that is circulating the, the, this protocol is exactly like the mail protocol or HTTP protocol. Uh, the, 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 the interest of the, the, the point of this protocol is to guarantee um, um, property rights on a network, right? That's basically what it, what it does. And it, uh, it guarantees in the sense that the, the, the object that you own are not created in, in illimit unlimited uh, supply. And in this case, the, the Bitcoin with little b usually are just the um, the units of account that are circulating on this network, and I believe they need another definition that money. Some say about programma programmable money. Some other say about uh, say, uh, in, well, there are plenty of definitions. I believe Bitcoin, in order to make sure there are no mistakes about what it is, should avoid the word money. My in my opinion, it is not a money. It is a protocol. Um, now, I'll, I'll, I'll go through the questions. Um, is using Bitcoin a source of utility? When I talk about a source of utility, I mean a source of value, even though I don't like the word value. Value does not exist. I mean, uh, value just depends on, on, a, on, a, on, a, on who you are and in what context you, you are in, right? Uh, I don't think I attach any importance to gold my, I, I guess I, I found out that my wife does, and it looks like she does even more when it's her birthday, right? Uh, so the, 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 the utility she, I mean, it looks like the utility she gets from ha uh, having gold is, uh, depends on who she is. I, I don't have the same utility and, and, uh, and, um, and the context in which it is used. So basically, it, it's, it doesn't mean much to say as Bitcoin a value. I'm not. I'm not sure it does. So let, let's 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 just ask ourselves: Is using Bitcoin a source of utility? And here I'm not sure. Uh, as it is today, the utility clearly. I mean, Bitcoin is tiny. And um, if we if we look at the size of the economy, the use of Bitcoin is tiny. Uh, and actually, there are many, many. I mean, I, I personally, with uh, my, uh, uh, I, I try to convince some friends or whatever to use it. We made a couple of, exper of experiments, tried to do a few little things, and in the end of the day, they just forgot about their private keys, and that was it. They never found any utility in using Bitcoin. I mean, today, the the I, I believe the, the the business case today is to enter the market through the the payment system. To say so, basically, all the all the companies offering money, uh, offering Bitcoin, so, sorry, or or dealing with Bitcoin, are entering the market, saying that it's cheaper uh, payment system and so and so on and so forth. Uh, when you look at at what it costs to pay in Bitcoin, I mean, it's a little bit easier. Not sure. Is it cheaper? No, not really. Actually, the transactions are cheaper, but you have you don't have the the same the same level of, guar of uh, guarantee that you have. If, you, if I had to pay an insurance against losing my, for, for, for to, um, to make sure I'm, I'm insured in case I lose my private keys, I would find the same numbers. So definitely there is no utility using Bitcoin today. However, what is interesting is that we're talking about utility in the context of today for some people. 
But what about tomorrow? As I said, Bitcoin is much, much more than money. People don't find an interest in using Bitcoin as money, that's for sure. But they will do if, we, if, if there are many, many other things that are attached to Bitcoin and the protocol is used efficiently. I mean, the full power of the, of the, of the protocol is used. Of course, here you have a catch-21 problem is that uh, people won't find out about the, the, this uh, better use, let's say, or more, yeah. more powerful use unless they start using it because they're th this uh, and and of course they don't use it because in the start you don't have this uh, attraction for i mean it's not worth it basically so is bit is using bitcoin a source of utility mm, i'm not sure uh how uh, uh, so why did we go through this uh, because i believe um uh, it is very important today that we give a clear definition of what bitcoin is i'm talking about bitcoin not cryptocurrency Currencies first because this is the only protocol I've I've really been through and studied, uh, and and some differences between some um, uh, cryptocurrencies may very much change what I'm saying to what what, what I'm saying now. So I'm I'm, I'm not ta I'm only talking about Bitcoin now. Uh, yeah, I believe giving a definition really matters. Why? Because basically, I believe there are, uh, the the. Um, <coughs> One of the reasons why, I mean, this is in the political area on the one side and on the user's side on the other side, you, uh, much of what is going on today is about misunderstanding what Bitcoin is. On the political side, no one understands really what it is. So it implies problems of dealing with taxation, dealing with in which category should Bitcoin really be? I mean, is it an asset? Is it a money? Is it no one knows and no one knows how to deal with this thing? And so states are morally m more or less uh, frightened about dealing with it. Uh, on the other side, you have this um, clash inside the, Bitco the Bitcoin community between, let's say, those who arrived first, uh, participated in its development, uh, that are more or less anti-state, anti-banks, and see Bitcoin as a way to fight this. Uh, and on the other side, the latecomers or the newcomers, let's say, that are investors that see Bitcoin as an investment, pr uh, investment uh, opportunity. The first ones are against any intervention of the state by nature. And the second ones, on the contrary, are for it because it allows them to lower their risk, ger I mean, le legislative risk. So. They don't, they don't want to be treated like terrorists because they just opened a business, right? So basically, all this means that, they're, they're, I mean, really, Bitcoin today is stuck in a, in, a, in a way where it doesn't really increase anymore, I believe, because it's not defined. That's, that's my point here. Uh, can this definition be def definitive or general? As I said, for general, I will talk only about Bitcoin, uh, not other cryptocurrencies. Since the protocol is, uh, can, can evolve, uh, well, I'm not even sure that if we give a definition today, it will apply tomorrow. I mean, today, mainly, as I told you, it is used as, a, as an alternative uh, payment system. But tomorrow, uh, I, I guess it won't. So what exactly will be the definition of, I mean, uh, when I'm talking about definition, I'm talking about legislative or, or um, use definition of it. Um, or in general, mm, not sure. I, I guess we will have to evolve with it. Okay, second question. So first, what is Bitcoin? We don't know really, but we need, it, we need an answer. Uh, is Bitcoin efficient? Uh, well, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a bit surprised that in front, I mean, usually economists do cost-benefit analysis, so uh, we're talking efficiency, not resilience here. Uh, I have good questions about resilience, but I guess that's for the debate. Uh, usually economists do cost-benefit analysis on everything. And, ever, and anything, uh, they never. I, I've, I've never seen one about Bitcoin. Uh, and actually, I guess it's worth it because it's not. It's not. It's not obvious at all. I'll, I'll just give you some just hints, just to uh, spark some interest on this. Uh, first, Bitcoin basically is a way to maintain a, a ledger, but decentralized. So everybody who is running the Bitcoin full node. Uh, basically as a copy of the ledger and maintains it. Um, well, first thing is 
is it, isn't it inefficient? For, of course, all costs I'm going to list here have the, also their, their white side and all white side. I mean, everything is a matter of quantitative. I don't have quantitative results here, so I'm just pointing at qualitative uh, ideas. But uh, of course, maintaining a ledger requires only one person, maybe someone that is gifted in account or in accounting or whatever. But basically, it's a huge, huge loss of efficiency to have a ledger uh, that is distributed and maintained by many, many people in a network. Uh, the way it is maintained by the network, it, it, so that everybody has more or less the same and uh, all our, our and, and the ledger is itself um, uh, consistent, is by this this idea. I mean, this um, uh, this idea of proof of work. So, but do you do, who who doesn't see, know what proof of work means? The, is, is it clear for everybody what proof of work means? So proof of work basically is the, the idea that uh, you require, in order to secure and to maintain this, uh, this, this uh, ledger, uh, you have plenty of computers. We were saying 20,000, the, 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 the equivalent of 20,000 supercomputers compute some arbitrary, I mean, not arbitrary, but some, let's call them first, well, mathematical problems, right? And they just heat up plenty of rooms for that. And uh, that's and uh, this is a huge loss of, uh, of uh, efficiency here. I mean, just maintaining this ledger is just a huge loss of efficiency. Of course, I'm not saying that the first best will be an equilibrium. So I'm just talking abstract terms here. Uh, of course, in the uh, you also have the benefits of Bitcoin. I, I believe personally, one of the most important is financial inclusion. So this basically is to give uh, to everybody more or less, um, well, to everybody with an internet connection, not even an internet connection, by the way, but with a connection on the planet, access to financial, uh, uh, to financial objects. Uh, I've, been, I've been teaching a little bit in Benin. Uh, I, I, I cannot tell you what, how, uh, expensive, socially expensive is financial exclusion. You also have the, um, the benefits of decentralization and the, 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 the benefits of not having a monopoly on the money. Um, again, as we said before, there is no trust required or trust in an algorithm instead of an authority. For in the Bitcoin protocol, this may very much lower risks and uh, this could be a gain for a benefit for the use of Bitcoin. And of course, you have, every, uh, uh, as I said before, Bitcoin is a protocol. It will become what people do with it. And uh, this could very much open new economies. Uh, you could see plenty of services that do not exist today exist thanks to Bitcoin. Um, guess I'm, OK, I'm a little bit late, so I will just um the 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 next question that is that is um i believe interesting for an economist to answer about bitcoin is first as we said bitcoin is uh, as as many economic features in it in terms of incentives and in terms of uh, of uh, game theory uh um and first thing should be to check or at least to bring something to the to the following to the following questions is Bitcoin working properly? Uh, today, today I doubt that. Uh, I'm not saying there is a flaw in terms of um, uh, in the in the in the in the programming itself. What I'm saying is that at some point there are some in, some incentives that are given to some people, or we are waiting for some equilibrium that actually don't really are that obvious. Uh, I have a paper, for instance, that looks at what miners, I mean, sh so, the, so miners are, are the guy who are doing the, the, the computational, uh, solving the computational problems uh, we talked about just before, and, uh, and they can include more or less the transactions they want in their block. So the group b transactions that are, that are in the mempool, they take it and include them in blocks, and in, and, and once in, the, in this block, transaction is deemed definitive. I'm, I'm a little bit simplistic here, but that's the idea. Uh, 
actually today, if you look at the at the equilibrium of these games, so of course all all miners are in a race in a race uh, competition to be the first ones to be able to to build a block because there is a reward building a block. Um, today, if you look at the equilibrium, so there, since they're all in a race, there is a game between them. If you look at the at the equilibrium of this game, actually, miners should not include transactions in blocks. So they should just mine empty blocks. All of them mining empty blocks, not being an equilibrium either, right? So, but f if we start from the position, from the situation that is today's situation, where all miners include all blocks today. A, a, a single deviation that is not including a block is profitable for the for the guy who deviates. Right? That's an example where um, I believe there is something to say by economists to 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 make sure that Bitcoin is working properly. Of course, this is not a, again the protocol can evolve, so this is not a fatal flow for those of you who own Bitcoins. Don't sell it in a rush. That's that's okay. <laughs> it could be this could be solved, and actually this is uh, the kind of question that are act that are currently treated by the the, the main de the guys who are in charge of the development. <coughs> and finally, and that's that's where I think actually uh, Bitcoin is the most interesting for um, for an economist. Is uh, I b I believe that uh, Bitcoin will open new horizons for economies and for economists in terms of science, economic science, and for economies in general. Let's see economics as a science of aggregation and implementation. What I mean by that is that you have an objective. I don't think that's the the job of the economist to f to to set the objectives. Objectives comes from somewhere else. We're not politicians and we're not clergymen, so we don't fix objectives. Objectives come from politics, so it can be um, the people's objectives, if you wish, not uh, the dictator one. We don't have a word to say about this. Authorities, different authorities, comes from philosophy of the time. Uh, companies, if you do some consulting for a company, I don't know, whatever you want. The objective is what you what you don't what is 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 exogenous for you, uh, and con and you have a set of constraints that come from agents behavior or let's say preferences I don't think we have a word to say but uh, agents behavior right I'm, I'm, I'm not a clergyman so I, I take them as, as, as given or granted uh, and we have physical constraints right we cannot extract uh, more oil from the ground that there already is uh, and and the idea is to look at this problem and try to see what is efficient what is an equilibrium? Of course, both things are not necessarily the same. You can have a, a situation that would be the most efficient uh, situation that would not be an equilibrium, or an, equ an, in, an, equi an equilibrium that would not be efficient. Um, and, and to try to design a way to reach the most favored states, let's say. And I believe Bitcoin is very important in the sense that it really can help soften physical constraints. In economics, we have many, many uh, studies where actually, so physical constraints, for instance, would be uh, binding contracts, right? So many, many, in many, many uh, um, uh, situations in life, there are things that, that you cannot reach efficiency because you cannot obtain uh, binding contracts. Um, for instance, in the protocol, Bitcoin allows many, many things that would soften these kind of, of, of uh, physical uh, constraints. That's, that's an example. So in the, um, that's it. So in, in, uh, in, uh, in uh, conclusion, I would say, uh, I believe the, the, um, the first approach by economists would be first motivated by the fact that they don't really understand what Bitcoin is. And I believe it's, it's, uh, it's Economists are to blame for that, but also maybe uh, the community that should try to find a real definition, a real almost agenda for it. What's the purpose of it? Why? And so on and so forth. Um, uh, I believe today, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not on the side of the pros or cons that are more or less at war. Uh, I believe there are many, many um, uh, important features in it, interesting features in it, many, many limitations. And I know there are some people working on, on uh, really, I mean, 
solved on those limitations. Uh, but I believe definitely it should be an, an uh, area of interest, and I believe it should be for everybody, not only economists, as a way to see what future economies will be. Thank you very much. <laughs>